my dear friends, let's start another chapter today. This is chapter number four from your first unit. I hope you remember the theme of the first unit and another chapters I think we had already studied. I will fly by Dr. P. J. Abdul Kalam and his first flight or by Liam of Laherty. Both of them were highly motivating stories and speech. It was a story, his first flight and uh, I will fly was a speech by Dr. P. J. Abdul Kalam. Both of them were highly motivating, I remember it. And overall, the theme of uh, this chapter is to motivate you because after 10th standard, you are getting admission in plus one. So our textbook makers or the think tankers behind the textbook have, have a great intention to motivate you uh, when you go through the plus one and plus two. Hope you understand their feelings. And I think it would be good if we get motivation in our life. Uh, we will go forward a lot, isn't it? I hope so. So let's come to the topic today. Uh, the name of the chapter, as you can see in the board, if. Maybe you think, why the name of a chapter? This is a poem, okay? Why if is the name of a poem? Because it's not a sentence, uh, it's not even a full word. It's just a word uh, uh, if because it has no any meaning independently. Right. It has no mean, it has no any independent meaning. Because to get meaning for this word, we should add another clause, another sentence with this. So why the name if? So you will understand the importance of naming the poem with the word if. And the author is Rudyard Kipling, is a famous short story writer, poet, and mostly he was writing for the he was writing tales, and uh, the poem "If" is one of his famous poems. And uh, another thing he was writing, praising the British uh, soldiers in India, and as you can see, this how part of plus one English and uh, unit one lesson four and I, I remember that there is chapter three is reminding that's also another motivating one it's like a biography of a great personality hope you heard about him uh, Stephen Hawking the great physician don't you remember such a person a great one who really motivated the people by his life Anyway, coming to the poem, before that, as we do in every uh, chapter, we must have an introduction about the poem. So, form of the poem or type of the poem, there are many kinds of poem, we'll be discussing that. Anyway, this is the poem, if is a didactic poem. Have you heard the word didactic? Didactic means uh, giving advice or instructions to other people. I hope uh, you don't like advisors, right? Uh, in your life, especially uh, in psychology, we say that if you want to know that your child or your boy or your girl has become teenage or he he just grew up, there will be one symptom you can surely identify whether he is a teenager or not. So, what is that symptom? symptom that he won't receive or she won't receive any advice that's it so this age you know 17 or 16 you know, up to 25 or 24 we people uh, don't like advice and one thing is this is the age that we get more advice from our parents and teachers and society right and we don't like those people also isn't it Right. We have our own intentions, we have our own dreams and we want to uh, go through uh, a different world, we want to dream a lot, uh, we want to go through the ideas which we have already made in our, our life and if someone come and tell us, why don't you do like this? Look at the person who got the first rank in your class, why don't you become like him? is it i'm sorry isn't it so uh this is such a poem but never think that it's a boring one i'm not going to advise you this is a poem like a father advises his son 
but this uh, way of talking or this way of advice is greatly motivating never blaming or i i i promise you once you read this poem you will feel it and uh, uh, personally speaking i feel this is one of the most favorite poems for me if by rudyard kipling even i even uh, before uh, i was teaching in plus 1 or i was reading this poem and if i go for any class or or any motivational sessions for other students even if they are not in plus 1 i go and refer this page because i will get a motivation sometime if i get desp never think that i am just uh, talking blunders or i i just tell everything being honest i i refer this poem again and again to get a motivation for myself and that that uh, that much a good poem is this so first of all understand the poem if is a didactic poem means a father instructs or advises his son how to grow up so how to grow up means there there is a similar poem you can see uh like uh from abraham lincoln uh to his Uh, there was a letter from abraham lincoln to his uh, son's teacher in that poem also maybe you had studied this in 10th standard or anywhere uh, because in lower classes we had that one so it would it was like in a way same time it was like a motivation how to grow up how to move forward and never think it is an advice or instruction think like sharing an experience an elder one like what you know for example if i have already left the age which you have covered or which you are going to cover and i have already covered that so if i give you for example uh, if i give you instruction regarding uh, your life after experiencing my life it's like giving you a positive idea about your future right uh, one more example to simplify this if i uh, went to um, a village and you are coming back is it then i would give you advice right because i have already uh, gone that way so i know which are the good ways or which are the shortcuts to reach that village like that here if uh, the father already had lived his life so he does know how to go forward how to move forward how to tackle the situations and how we can gain the uh, trust of others how we can be self motivated and self confident all time in our life okay and you know a number of dos and don'ts that's you don't like in your life i know it for example if someone tell you do this don't do that this people don't like it anyway here you can see a number of dos and don'ts means something you can do and something you don't do that so here now one thing it will be boring advice it's really a logical one interesting one before that just some words about our author rudyard kipling joseph rudyard kipling and don't forget to read it with me joseph rudyard kipling 1865 and 1936 okay the age he lived okay an english short story writer so mostly he was a short story writer poet a novelist is chiefly remembered for his tales and poems for of british soldiers in india see what do you mean by tales tales means like stories and uh, something that doesn't happen okay uh, interesting stories which you can read in your small like magic pot another like balarama balabhumi such books you read such stories are known as tales and poems of british soldiers in india so he was mostly writing praising the british soldiers in india for children and and his tales for children also he was famous kipling's if perhaps his most famous poem i told you that so uh, if can be the most popular poem uh, from the collection of poem collection of uh, rudyard kipling and that poem if attracted immediate nationwide attention hope you know that uh, we people are lucky enough at certain point maybe there will be good writers there will be uh, good scientists there will be good uh, doctors but in certain point of life they become famous 
many youtubers are there many teachers are there when they do some videos or when they do something extra sometimes they become famous like that the poem if give a nationwide attention for our great author rudyard kipling joseph rudyard kipling see and it's uh, and it soon became a popular one so soon the poem if became a popular one and when you read it you will also understand why this poem is famous and uh, popular one see coming see before going again let me tell you one thing the purpose of the poem written in a pri in prize of leader star jameson the rhodesian administrator of the british south african company so there was a company for in in, in africa and uh, he was the administrator of uh, british who leander star jameson so it was the poem really written basically written in prize of him uh, to prize him uh, to give him congratulations because who coordinated british military operations in the boer war boer war is a famous war so in that war if you search for it i'm not going to uh, explain the historic part of that one if you're going through the uh, google you will get it okay so he coordinated the war that's why pricing him this poem was written and it uh, gives concrete illustrations of good uh, personality traits means concrete illustration means the real how you can be a real person how you can be a very good personality you will get right means such uh, elements of very good personality you will get it from the poem and he helped the son to uphold the moral values so moral values are important in our life never think that moral values means to sit in the corner of a class always take a book and study and not even talk to you, your friends never think values are like your standpoints or um, the way you act with people you don't need any value if you are sitting simply in a class and not talking with anyone but you need values when you need values you need values when you like to talk with your friends when you would like to talk with your parents when you would like to talk with your teachers you need manners so good manners are good values so you should keep that because you know we are evaluated in front of the people not on the basis of your score or the mark or or, or the full a plus you have you have scored in your 10th grade examinations or the full a1 or the 100 percentage mark it's all about your manners your mannerism and your values at least you think that if all people tell about us he's a very good personality don't you like that i think you know, nowadays people or the new generation ha have a new generation has a trend of uh, not being good with others because they don't like to say that they are good people so always be good with values i never tell you that simply always studying and always uh, doing good things no it's about your interaction with teachers your interaction with friends so at least people will tell about you oh he is a very good personality when someone tell you that there is a point about you understand okay so uh, coming to the poem this is a stanza one of the first part of the poem see i hope you will read it with me see so why this poem is named if you can see many if clauses one two three now on the first stanza it's three and coming stanzas also is this so about if you have to understand one thing if you tell a word using if that sentence is incomplete be, uh, until you add another clause or another sentence the grammar of if is a separate one we'll be discussing that after this the grammar of if that's a separate one you should understand about that how we use if when we use if close with a simple present and simple past and uh, past participle what are the differences coming in the main clause also so if for example if you can keep your head someone tell if you can keep your head this sentence is incomplete so all the sentences are incomplete it will be completed or it's finished 
only when we add the last sentence of the fourth stanza totally this form has four parts so in the last uh, stanza only you will understand it but i will tell you to for make it easy for you if you can keep your head you will be a man and all the world will be of your own so that is a full sentence so understand the full sentence is like if you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you that is the first clause or the if clause and to finish that sentence we use a word that is uh, if you can keep your head when all about you are losing and there and blaming it on you if you can keep your head when all this happen uh if you keep your if you if you can keep your head long you are the man and all the world will be of you so that is the second clause or the subordinate uh, or the main clause or the uh, after the if clause uh, to join it together then it will be a sentence okay so that's about an introduction so let's start it are you ready so read it with me if you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you if you can trust yourself when all men doubt you but make allowance for their make allowance for their doubting too if you can wait and not be tired by waiting or being lied about don't deal in lies or being hatred don't keep wait hating and yet don't look too good nor talk too wise so if you are doing all these things so let's come to the uh, come to the point the first thing in the two first line what was it if you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you for example you have created many things many dreams many uh, many achievements but in a moment you lose all those things you lost all those things and everything about you is losing like you are going to fail in your life but still if you are capable of keeping your head long if you are capable of keeping your head high without any complaints you are not going to make complaints or bad comments about your problems so that is a great self confidence and that is a great mental ability and local people or the average people never do that if you wanted to keep quiet or if you want to do a lot of things in your life understand you should be such a person if you want to do many things for example if you lose something or for example all about you are losing your marks your ability your control everything is losing then still if you can keep your head long means keep your head means uh, if you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you means keeping your head means if you can keep the standard and not losing not not bowing your head but don't think that to be greedy it's not about to be greedy and coming to the second if you can trust yourself when all men doubt you but make allowance for their doubting too it means when all people doubt you like they say this man he can't complete this course why we sent him for that uh, he cannot uh, finish plus one science even he even after scoring full a plus in 10th standard somebody will tell you oh that was a lack from that boy he cannot co complete he can't score full a plus in plus one or plus two like that in all our ability for example if we go to play cricket so it, it, it was our turn to bat then our teammates or other teammates simply laughing at us they are simply laughing at us and they say no this man cannot do that still all people doubt you doubt in your capacity they doubt in your ability they doubt in your caliber they doubt in your self confidence but even all people doubt you if you can trust yourself 
because you are the person who know yourself the most right no other no other people you know yourself you know your abilities you know your negative points you should know your strength you should know your weakness so to trust yourself you should that point is highly important and you should underline that you trust yourself to trust yourself you should gain one thing that you should know your strength is it and you should know your weakness also so understand if you can trust yourself when all men doubt you what you mean by trust yourself i have trust in myself when someone tell you for uh, for example in a classroom somebody tell you you just oh, fahad or fida or fatima come you just be the leader in your class so you said i can I, I, i cannot be leader and all other students are also talking the same they say he can't be leader but here you have to understand you should know if you cannot become a leader truly if you cannot think you have to admit the fact that i cannot be that here i told you you should know your strength when you know your strength you can catch on that point and you utilizing that strength you can be the star in the world understand everybody in this world cannot be the greatest people in the same way in a classroom or in a society there will be leaders he so in school you cannot be a good teacher in school you can be only a good student isn't it so i cannot be a good student in school i can be a good teacher only that's why understand your area of work and your area of practice there you can shine only after you understanding yourself that's why prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said once if a person know his own body or himself if a person know himself he will know the god so the way to reach to the god itself is to understand ourselves because all the mechanism of our body will talk about that that was a point prophet made but here you have to understand so when you trust yourself even all men doubting and same thing there is another condition but make allowance for their doubting too when someone doubt you just tell them you can doubt never tell that why you doubt me why you uh, question my ability why you question my caliber never go to an argument with him he let them doubt let them doubt i hope you remember the words of winston churchill once one once he told when we go for a walk for a long journey there will be stray dogs means stray dogs will be there will be barking and if we are going to give answer or if you are going to throw all those barking dogs on our on our journey we will not reach our uh, destination so do one thing do one thing we cannot we can't reach our destination and let them bark and let's move that was the word greatest word from winston church don't forget that okay make allowance for their doubting too if you can wait and not be tired by waiting that is another point right what do you say about waiting and i heard after plus 2 if i ask any student of your class what is your plan after plus 2 he would tell what he will tell what uh sir uh, i i don't want to waste my time by doing a degree i don't want to waste my time by doing 3 years it's a waste of time i'm going for a course uh, that that's a point you make i don't know which how from where you got that word i am going for a course means a small courses like a two month course or six month courses and you want to do the job never think so my dear students never think you should wait for the best out of you and don't be tired by waiting also and simply we can tell about this if you're waiting for your friend and uh, you are not losing the control if he is late you you should treat him like okay sorry i know you have certain reason to be wait, uh, to be late if that's a uh, uh, outer meaning in your meaning in your life in your life if you're waiting for a position if you're waiting for a profession wait so long the best will come and the best is yet to come believe in that one never think so after the plus to take a degree take a bbs and i heard many other students talking when we talk about neat or je examination that tell oh we have to waste a lot of hours a lot of time never 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 understand the more backup you make you can go forward 
with great resource if you're waiting so long and uh, collecting the resource for a journey in every in every journey we need rest right like that now this is a resting time once you come to the professional field you cannot be uh, a person to sit uh, you, ca you can't rest a lot are you getting me don't be tired by waiting wait for the best one that's why i i know people who make uh, sudden decisions without a second thought always they be in trouble by luck they got something maybe in in life for example give you a, a, an easy example for example if i it was when i was searching a girl to marry uh, so somebody told me so i was searching for one so i will looking and i will be going so when i told oh i don't like it i i i uh, we are we are not a match couple so after watching 10 or 11 girls or the uh, people spouses or partners i see, still say that no i don't want that so my family friends or my, all the members from my family they will tell why you are waiting so long see just take another one and why you have such demand suppose uh, listening to their words if i marry a girl which i don't like even after waiting so long what is tell i can't move forward but after waiting so long if i get the most beloved one or, or one uh, i one uh, who matches for my life and what i feel as my soulmate it will be good right So in between that it was for an example let me tell you one thing if my marriage i i didn't search a lot okay just for a joke take it <laughs> okay so we cannot wait for long and don't be tired by waiting and if you can wait and not be tired by waiting or being lied about and don't deal in lies this is another character another moral values you should keep in your heart and all through your life whether you are a student or a teacher or a father or a mother don't lie in your life even people tell lie about you and to give them a a trap you are also trying to lie that's never the good way never it would be a good way uh, to react for that lie i never think so understand it okay so lying is the most wretched character because once you lied you have to lie a lot for what to keep uh, uh your promise or you t you to keep your standpoint you have to lie about once you told the truth what happens maybe they will punish you they will think you uh, they will uh, think very bad about you maybe but after lying 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 once the truth will come out is it so moving the wheel the truth will come out at that moment at that moment that would be a bad idea if uh, people uh, hate you after because you, they will think that he lied at that time at that time he lied but you lied me like so better you be honest honest is honesty is a best policy means once you tell the truth you can be free in mind when you have a bad quality or when you you have something to hide in your heart you can't move forward with a great uh, motivation it's always about you know uh, it, you feel bad you feel bad i'm sure about what you feel bad because uh, what i tell what what i say because you feel bad there, there is something that take you back once you tell the truth to anyone your mind will be free you can go forward so here if you can wait and not be tired by waiting or being lied about and don't deal in lies or being hate then don't give way to hating oh that's a great point right How, what do what is your philosophy or your concern about love and hate i know that we people love each love only someone is ready to love us also never if you can love your hater that's a point they will also on your track if you hate your hater what it means what is the difference between you 
So always defend the uh, bad things with good things. As Holy Quran says once, see you have to defend the bad things with the good things. So if there is a hater for you, never think, oh, I should also hate him. So there is no difference. Because if you hate him, there is a reason for him. And uh, for uh, to hate you also. So never give a reason for others. And look at the prophets or the great leaders. If, though, if that people hate everyone, they cannot make a change in the life. And we are hating and yet don't look too good nor talk too wise and the last point underline this you are not a great personality even you are not too good nor you are talking wise talking wise means like an intelligent you are not an intelligent person but still you are talking not good but you don't give for uh, way for hating you don't lie with others you are ready to wait then uh, you are you don't blame others you will keep your head along always then if you can do all this you are a great man and all the world is of you that's it okay so let's uh, rewind what we said the first sense is about self-confidence first four lines don't you remember the first four lines look at this if you can keep your head when all about your losing and there is and blaming it on you if you can press yourself and all men doubt you but make elements for their doubting too that the first four lines were about self-confidence fifth line if you can wait and not be tired by waiting patience means you should be patient and not hurry you are so patience is a, a great uh, character or a good value you should keep in your in your in your life and lies don't lie even if others lie tell lies to or lies to you or about you hatred don't yield to hatred uh, through others hate you okay pretensions means be genuine in words and deeds means last line look at the last line and yet don't to look too good no talk too wise even if uh, after all that you should uh, be the uh, great personality with your pretensions means you are genuine and good in your deeds so don't forget if for examination if you are asked to write the theme of the first stanza scene self confidence patience don't lie don't hate others and be uh, with pretensions when genuine in your words so to understand it again let me tell you according to the father what should the son do when others blame him should he blame them others also no the father advises his son to say stay cool and confident when others blame him and look at according to the father what should the son do when others doubt him he should also doubt him or he should react he should uh, talk badly to them no you know the answer the father suggests that his son should be confident and trust himself when others doubt him he should also understand why others doubt him and correct himself that's the point when someone doubt you understand to just um, give them allowance to doubting too means for doubting too means you should understand why they doubt so if without any reason people don't uh, doubt us see according to the father what should the son do when others hate him when others hate him he should not yield or surrender to hatred means don't surrender to hatred or yield for hatred because you know if you are surrendering for hatred what happens you and him like one uh, there is no any difference between you so come to next question from the chapter for the first stanza. What does the father says about patience? The father says that his son should be patient enough to wait. He should not get tired or impatient by waiting. I told about waiting for your course, waiting for your life. So waiting would make the best result. Okay. So come to understand it again and again. Let me tell you what does the father says about lies? Whether the father says it or not, whether the father tell it or not, you should be careful in that one. The father thinks that his son should not indulge, indulge means uh, busy with, in, busy in lies or indulge in lies even if all around him are liars and he advises his son to be honest and truthful. Okay, so I would like to advise you also to be honest and truthful. See. 
what does the father say about pretensions so this is the last question so we were talking about self confidence uh, and uh, patience lies hatred everything and pretensions are, is the last one the father says that his son should be genuine in his words and deeds right so that's about pretension and is a very good character so i hope you are impressed with the first stanza we will be going through the second third and fourth stanza in another class hope you enjoyed it very well thank you so much